Hello there, M.Strange here from the Strange School. And this video is going to be about animation events and how to use them with Playmaker. Because I'm always on the Playmaker forums and I've seen a lot of questions about animation events. And I think there's some really good written um, tutorials, documentation. But there aren't really many videos that show you how to do it step by step in an easy way. So I hope to do that. So. To start off, what we're going to do is that we have this animated 3D model in our 3D application and we're going to send out an FBX file and uh, the animation that's going to be the one that we want to work with is this one where he opens his mouth because we're going to want him to shoot a little ball out only when his mouth is open at this time. So the process that we're going to use, you could use for a character like swinging a melee weapon. So if you only want the weapons collider to damage things to be active during a certain frame range. Um, of course, what we're doing now, having it fire something, you can use it for whatever you want, but what we're gonna do is make it so this guy only shoots a fireball out of his mouth when we're at a specific frame in the animation, something like this. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to export an FBX, and if you're doing this in Blender or whatever program you're using, um, you just export an, F an FBX. This video doesn't really go over this process but um, I'm just going to export some animation and send that out and let's go and import. I'm going to bring that into Unity here and okay so we have our model with the animations here and the one we want to work with is just the open the mouth one so I'm just going to go make a clip that is just that um, the animation it might not be a perfect loop but that's not really the point of this so we'll go there and then he opens his mouth and then bounces it closed like that okay and let's just go fire ball and make sure we apply that and I'm just gonna go turn off keyframe reduction okay so now we have this clip Okay, like so, looping. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this gigantic model into our scene. I'm gonna scale him down like that. And also put him on the floor. Okay. So there's a couple things we need to do to get him animating. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to Window Animator to open up our Mechanum window. And as we see, if we click here, he has no animation controller. So we need to go make one of those. And there's other tutorials about animation controllers and stuff like that. That's not what this one's about. But I'm just going to go through the process as a refresher. So we create a controller and then we put it on the character. And if we go back to our animator, now we have this. Okay. So let's go ahead and make a state for our animation. And let's just call this spit. Make sure to press return or it does not remember. Okay. <clears throat> so this is where we have a few options because we can drag our clip in here and if I go to look through our clips and search for whatever I named it we can go actually look in the hierarchy of our FBX too so I named it fireball just to remember so I could just go like this and load it in here and it would work but there are some limitations to that so when you go and import your model, if you scroll down here, you'll see that you have an option to add events. And these are actual animation events. You can add them here in the model. And you can do that and the events will work fine. But if you're working off the FBX that's embedded, if you're working, sorry, if you're working off the animation clip that's embedded in the FBX, you can't go back and add new animation events to it. And there's a caveat because it will allow you to add them but then when you close the scene and open it again, they'll be gone. They won't be saved. So you want to work with a copy of this. So the way you do that is simply by clicking on the clip that's embedded in the FBX and using Control D to duplicate it. And you'll have one name the same thing. And I'm just going to go rename this one Edit. And this is the one we're going to want to work with because we can add animation events on the fly. So I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to load in the fireball edit. Okay. So if you don't use a copy and you want to use animation events, then you have to add them here. You have to add them in here. 
because it'll allow you to, but they won't save. So that's something to remember. But just for good practice, it's always good to um, use a copy of the clip. And if I didn't need this model, if I was bringing in additional files just for the animations, I could delete this too. But we're using this model, so. All right, so now if we press play, we should have our guy doing that. And he only does it once, so we wanna loop that. So let's double click the clip, turn on looping. Okay, so now we have this guy's opening and closing his mouth and he's looping. And so what we want to happen is we want him to shoot a little ball, I have this simple bullet, out of his mouth at a specific frame. So how do we do that? Well first, we're using Playmaker, so we're going to need an FSM for that to actually shoot the bullet. So I just went and made a super simple FSM here on the separate shooter object. And all it does is get the owner, stores it as a self, game object variable. And then when it re receives the fire global event, and this can be any name you give it. This just has to match the one that you trigger in the animation events. So when it receives a fire event, it's going to create this bullet object. Really simple. So when you're dealing with animation events, you have to have the FSM like this that you want to send the events to on the same object that has the animator component. So if I put the fire FSM down here, or if I had this in another null and I put it there, it won't work. So it will fire the events to the one with the animator component. So remember that. So I'm gonna go back to the separate shooter game object and copy this FSM and then paste it on the part of the model that has the animator component. And let's paste that in. So what will happen now is if this this animation here sends any events it will be received by this FSM as long as the, the names match if you don't have anything to receive it nothing will happen so how do we add the actual animation events let's go do that so we're going to want the animation window which is over here and let's stick this uh, down here okay so click on your object and all the animations that are on it will show up here as clips. So this is our fireball edit. This is the one we want. And if we scrub through now, we can go to the exact frame where we want to shoot the fireball. So let's say we want it right here. Okay. So you have these little buttons here. If you roll over them, um, it should tell you what they do. So we want an event. So we're going to go add event, which gives us this little thing here. And if we double click it, we get this pop-up. And so for Playmaker users, if you just want to send events for things to happen, don't get confused with all this stuff happening in here. The only one you care, care about is send event string. So go ahead and choose that one. And now what this is, this is the event you want to fire in the FSM. So we have the event fire. This is what we want to trigger with this animation. So all you do is type the event in there. So if I close this and go back, let's go to our animation tab. It looks like it's still recording, which it should not be. So if you go look at this, it looks like nothing happened, right? Because it won't actually fire the event or have this stuff happen here in the viewport. But if now we go through and press play, now he shoots a bullet out of his mouth. Just like that, exactly when we wanted it to. So, to go, to go over this again, you want to make sure and create a copy of this animation file because what would happen if we didn't? It would allow us to do this, but then if we quit Unity and came back, this would be gone. So, um, that's one thing to remember to always use copies. And then also, I want to show you something that can really throw you off that is a limitation of Unity, and that is right now we just have one playmaker FSM here so when we go to add these events like let's just go add another one like this and we go to this pop-up we want send event so like let's just make one called do stuff and if we create a new state let's just call it do stuff and then let's create a new event and uh, let's go look at the syntax I'm just gonna copy it <clears throat> do stuff and I'm going to create a new event called do stuff and use it doesn't have to be a global transition either 
So I'm just using globals here, but this this just could be like this. So maybe I'll do it this way to show you that this works too. Yeah, okay. So um, the game view is gonna take over this screen, so let's put it here. Okay, so I just wanna show you that when that do stuff rolls over, it'll fire this too. So they don't have to be globals, just so you know. But what I wanted to show you is a limitation of Unity. So everything's good, right? I can go on here and call these and then change, select, send event. But if I go and add another FSM on this object, um, let's call him Troublemaker because he's making trouble for us now, as you'll see. So if we go back here and then let's go add another animation event right here. This is just like I'm used to doing and oh my god, I cannot select anything. So this is not a uh, limitation of Playmaker. This is actually a limitation of Unity. So if you have more than one FSM you're trying to send events to and from what I understand, if you have more than any um, of the more than one of any of the same type of component it will also not let you add events so if you're gonna send events to an FSM make sure you only have one FSM on that because if you see here this does not work and then if I go to the FSM um, our troublemaker and remove it and I go back and now all of a sudden I can do this again so those are things to remember. I hope this was helpful for you using animation events. They're really powerful to give you exact control over what you want to happen in your game. So I hope this helps somebody out there. And if you want to learn more about Unity and Playmaker, check out The Strange School at thestrangeschool.com. I have courses on making an entire um, third person game with Unity and Playmaker. And I have an advanced AI class using uh, Behavior Designer, which is a really good behavior tree asset. So. Hope this was helpful, and until next time, M.Strange saying bye.